Hello everyone, welcome back to Sedu Satsui Sama Tutorials. So as per the request of our supporters, we are planning to bring a new MCQ discussion series for the upcoming Drug Inspector examination, both for the Public Service Commission PSC Drug Inspector exam as well as for the UPSC Drug Inspector examination. So this series is called as a 500 MCQ series where we will be bringing uh, the top 500 MCQ discussions which will help you in the Drug Inspector examination preparation. Now every discussion will be having 5 MCQs so that uh, by 100 videos we will be covering all the top uh, 500 MCQs. Now there will, um, the questions will be from important chapters of the subjects given in the syllabus. There will be easy tips and tricks to remember the concept. Also we will be taking the questions from the previous drug inspector examinations. Okay, So this will really help you in your uh, drug inspector exam preparation. So stay tuned and keep on watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe and comment your valuable feedback to us so that we can get back to you. Okay, So without any further delay, let's move on to the first question. The question is, which are the following, uh, which are the following cells of pancreas secrete somatostatin? A choice alpha cells, B choice beta cells, C choice gamma cells, D choice delta cells and E choice none of the above. So the first thing you should remember uh, about the islets of pancreatic cells, islets of pancreas, the important cells are alpha cells, beta cells, gamma cells, delta cells and epsilon cells, epsilon cells. So these are the important cells of the pancreas which secrete various hormones. Now as you all know alpha cells secrete the hormone called as glucagon, beta cells secrete the insulin, beta, apart from insulin beta cells also secrete another hormone called as amylin. Now coming to delta cells sorry gamma cells gamma cells the the gamma cells secrete a substance called as pancreatic polypeptide pancreatic polypeptide abbreviated as pp pancreatic polypeptide is secreted by gamma cells now coming to delta cells delta cells secrete somatostatin 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 is also called as growth hormone inhibiting hormone. Growth hormone inhibiting hormone. So somatostatin or growth hormone inhibiting hormone is secreted by delta cells. Now epsilon cells secrete the hunger hormone. Secrete the hunger hormone called as relin. G H R E L N. Relin. Okay. So hunger hormone or relin is secreted by epsilon cells okay now coming back to your question uh, which of the following secretes somatostatin uh, that is growth hormone inhibiting hormone the answer will the correct answer would be definitely delta cells d choice okay so hope you understood the first question now let's move on to the second question which of the following is a is, which of the following is an heterocyclic amino acid heterocyclic amino acid a choice histidine, B choice arginine, C choice tyrosine, D choice cysteine and E choice glutamate. Okay, So the answer to this question is histidine. Histidine is a heterocyclic amino acid. Apart from histidine, tryptophan is also a heterocyclic amino acid, tryptophan. So histidine and tryptophan, they belong to heterocyclic amino acid heterocyclic amino acid now why they are called as heterocyclic amino acid because they contain heterocyclic rings okay for example histidine histidine contain the heterocyclic ring called as imidazole histidine contains the heterocyclic ring called as imidazole whereas tryptophan tryptophan contains the heterocyclic ring called as indole okay 
So since they contain this heterocyclic rings such as imidazole or indole, they belong to the category heterocyclic amino acids. Okay. So histidine and tryptophan are the examples for heterocyclic amino acid. Whereas arginine belongs to a category called as basic amino acid. They are basic amino acid. Apart from arginine, lysine is also an example for basic amino acid. Okay, so lysine and arginine they are examples for basic amino acids. Now coming to C choice tyrosine, you should remember tyrosine and phenylalanin, tyrosine and phenylalanin, they belongs to aromatic amino acid. Aromatic amino acid. Tyrosine and phenylalanine belongs to aromatic amino acid. Tryptophan is also an example for aromatic amino acid. Now coming to the uh, D choice, cysteine. Cysteine. So cysteine and methionine. You should remember these two amino acids. Cysteine and methionine. They are sulfur containing amino acid. They are sulfur containing amino acid or simply sulfur amino acids. Now coming to the uh, E choice that is glutamate. Glutamate or the ionic form of glutamic acid, glutamate or glutamic acid as well as aspartic acid, aspartic acid, they belong to the category acidic amino acid. acidic amino acid. So glutamic acid or glutamate as well as aspartic acid they belongs to as acidic amino acid. Cysteine and methionine belongs to sulfur containing amino acid. Whereas uh, tyrosine, phenylalanine and tryptophan they belongs to uh, aromatic amino acid. Then comes uh, histidine and uh, tryptophan they are heterocyclic amino acid. Arginine and lysine they are basic amino acid. So here the question was which of the following is a heterocyclic amino acid the correct answer is histidine that is uh, choice A. So hope you understood this uh, discussion now let us move to the third question ok. The question is uh, which of the following uh, is correct in the case of uh, competitive enzyme inhibition A choice Km is increased Vmax is increased B Km decreased Vmax decreased C Km decreased and Vmax increased, D choice Km increased and Vmax decreased and E choice none of the above. So here basically they have given two terms, one is called as the Km, the other term is called as the Vmax. So this, uh, these parameters com comes in the equation called as michaelis mendel equation. michaelis menden equation which comes uh, in the enzyme kinetics okay so the equation e for uh, equation is v is equal to v is equal to v max into substrate concentration divided by km plus s km plus substrate concentrate so this equation is called as the enzyme kinetic equation or uh, michaelis menten equation enzyme kinetic equation or the michaelis menten equation where v is the measured velocity v max is the maximum velocity km is called as the michaelis menten constant michaelis menten constant km is the constant now the s in the bracket is nothing but the substrate concentration okay now with respect to this question you need to remember mainly this km and vmax km and vmax what is the change in the case of uh, competitive inhibition and what is the change in the case of uh, non competitive inhibition competitive inhibition and the second one the non competitive inhibition how the km and vmax how the km and vmax is affected depending on the competitive and non-competitive inhibition. So in the case of competitive inhibition remember k 
km is increased whereas there is no change for the Vmax. However, in the case of non-competitive inhibition, there is no change for the km whereas Vmax is decreased. So, you better remember this uh, table. In the case of uh, competitive inhibition, km is increased, no change for Vmax. In the case of non-competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition, the km no change, unaffected, whereas the Vmax, there is a decrease. Okay. Now, let us come back to our question. So, this uh, here the question was competitive. So, as I already told, in the case of competitive, km is increased, whereas Vmax, there is no change. This is what we have learned in the case of competitive inhibition. So, as you can see, uh, there is no choice, uh, correct answer in this case, A, KM was increased, Vmax had increased. So, there is no correct answer from A, B, C, D. So, the correct answer for this question will be E choice, none of the above. So, hope you understood this uh, discussion also. Now, let us uh, go back to the fourth question. Uh, the question is, most abundant neurotransmitter in the brain, A choice, glycine. B choice glutamate, C choice GABA, D choice aspartate and E choice dopamine. So, the first thing you should know, the most abundant uh, neuro among the neurotransmitters, among the neurotransmitters, some neurotransmitters are excitatory neurotransmitters. So, neurotransmitter could be excitatory, some neurotransmitters are inhibitory in nature. Okay. Now, the examples for excitatory neurotransmitters are aspartate and glutamate. So, aspartate and glutamate are examples for excitatory neurotransmitter, whereas inhibitory, the examples include GABA, that is gamma amino butyric acid, GABA, glycine is also an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Whereas dopamine is both excitatory as well as inhibitory, both excitatory as well as inhibitory. Okay. Now, the question is uh, the most abundant neurotransmitter and the most abundant neurotransmitter is glutamate. This is the most abundant neurotransmitter. Whereas the second most abundant, this is the first most abundant neurotransmitter, the answer is glutamate and the second most abundant is GABA, second most abundant. Okay. So, glutamate is the most abundant neurotransmitter whereas GABA is the second most abundant neurotransmitter. So, the answer for this question is uh, B choice glutamate, okay. that is the most abundant neurotransmitter. However, if the question is which is the most abundant inhibitory neurotransmitter, which is the most abundant inhibitory neurotransmitter, then, then the correct answer is GABA because glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. So, read the question carefully. If the question is the most abundant neurotransmitter, the answer is glutamate. Whereas, if the question is the most abundant inhibitory neurotransmitter, then the correct answer is GABA. Okay. Now, let us move on to the last question, the fifth question. The question is, which of the following is the drug of choice for mountain sickness? The drug of choice for mountain sickness, A choice, hyosin, B choice, promethacin, C choice, doxalamine, e, uh, D choice, acetazolamide and E choice, all of the above. Okay. So, let us look at the first choice that is hyosin. So, hyosin is also called as scopolamine. Copolamine. We have learned that it is an anticholinergic drug. It is an anticholinergic drug. Okay. So it is given uh, for motion sickness. It is given for motion sickness. <coughs> and coming to the second choice, promethacin. Uh, so one more point you need to remember with the scopolamine. They are they can be given orally as a tablet form. However, the transdermal patch is also available. So, hyosin is also available as transdermal patch, which is a patch containing the hyosin, hyosin drug, which will be applied in the backside of your ear. 
so that you don't feel uh, uh, nausea vomiting that is why before traveling that patch is applied uh, on the back side of the ear so the transdermal patch is also available that form is also available for hyosin so also remember that point now coming to the second choice promethacin so promethacin is basically an antihistamine it's a antihistamine and uh, the brand name uh, we are very much familiar avomin avomin so that is also given for motion sickness motion sickness okay so before traveling you can take this um, avomin or promethacin that act as a that will prevent the nausea and vomiting okay now coming to the c choice doxylamine doxylamine is also basically an antihistamine it is also an antihistamine antihistamine and it will prevent vomiting in the case of uh, pregnancy that is called as the morning sickness okay so the nausea or the vomiting in the pregnant ladies the, that is called as the morning sickness so in that case uh, do doxylamine is given along with uh, vitamin b6 doxylamine along with uh, vitamin b6 that is pyridoxine vitamin b6 is called as pyridoxine so that is given to prevent the vomiting uh, in the case of pregnant ladies that is there is a uh, morning sickness okay doxylamine plus uh, vitamin b6 can be given for morning sickness whereas uh, mountain sickness acetazolamide is the drug of choice drug of choice for mountain sickness so mountain sickness is nothing but the high altitude high altitude sickness sickness the high altitude sickness is called as uh, mountain sickness uh, where the where the drug of choice is the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor acetazolamide is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor which we have already learned in the diuretic is also can be given uh, um, for glaucoma glaucoma it can decrease the intracranial tension uh, pressure that is uh, can be given for intracranial hypertension decrease the in intracranial tension in the case intracranial tension also it is uh, used as a mild diuretic it can be given for glaucoma and uh, in the case of high altitude sickness or motion sickness the drug of choice is acetazolamide so we have told about three sickness one is uh, motion sickness that is during the traveling you can give us scopolamine or hyosin or the promethacin whereas the morning sickness is the vomiting tendency in the pregnant ladies that is called as the morning sickness and doxylamine plus vitamin b6 is normally given whereas mountain sickness is the nausea vomiting feeling when you are reaching in the higher altitudes and that is also called as high altitude sickness sickness where the drug of choice is acetazolamide so the correct answer for this question is acetazolamide uh, d choice the drug of choice for mountain sickness so hope you understood this uh, five discussion five mcqs important mcqs we are, which we are just kick started for the drug inspector exam preparation so keep on watching our videos thank you